Remember, we were subject to the heralds of the dawn, the storming hands of nature's clock, as pervasive as the tallest bell tower, and for those whose days promised sprinting, sleeping, dancing, romancing, the starting gun was shared. Imagine the cock becoming us, crying of more than sunrise, filling the common font with clear, welcome waters, a song for a neighborhood, realigning its planes of time and place, to listen, to search for the bird on the branch, imagine its face, to regain the joy of audience. Hey everyone, welcome back to Solo Scene, the podcast imagining the ideal future that's beautiful, sustainable, and tactile. This is the first of our Lucy Goosey episodes, and this week we're talking about radio and its applications to the ideal future. I really liked your poem. I like the idea of the whole neighborhood waking up to the sound of a rooster. Yeah. We've been privy to experiencing that a few times in our lives. Yeah, I don't remember if I told the story on, on the podcast, but it was kind of this infamous little villain in my town in mm -hmm. the, where I used to live. Everybody just hated this one guy who had roosters, but I secretly loved it because it was kind of like everyone was like, why am I subject to this? This is not fair or whatever. But <laughs> I didn't consent. Yeah. The rooster wakes me up. We had a period of time where there were crows that did that. I just wasn't a fan. But the what's the connection between roosters and radio, Aaron? Just the idea of everybody listening to something. Everybody yeah. in the neighborhood. As the poem said, rewinding neighborhoods in time and place. Because neighborhoods, it's kind of like people talk about there having been a digital migration or like online refugees where we're really citizens of the internet so often. Mm. But the solo scene as regular listeners will know and new time listeners will find out is more about bringing those so-called digital communities I don't really believe in as real communities back into the real world, realigning the time and the place. And I ended the poem on the idea of regaining the joy of audience, which has kind of been on my mind a lot recently. And I think um, partially inspired this episode about radio because you hear so often the sentiment, like for instance, with cinema, People saying, well, why would I want to go watch a movie in a cinema? Forget the price mm. and, and the issue of accessibility. There's the fact that I don't want to have to watch a movie with other people. There's Tommy Texter. There's Sally Slurper. I can't hear anything. There's a glow of someone's phone screen. It's annoying. This guy beside me has a cough. I can just watch it at home in comfort by myself, mm. which I don't like. And I think it's kind of uh, symptomatic of like a growing aversion or like misanthropy to people that we feel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I feel it myself, but I don't like that I feel it myself sometimes. Yeah, and I think radio is a good way to bridge that gap, as you'll get to later on. Speaking of audience, anyone listening, you're welcome to subscribe. If you would like to check out our YouTube channel, we have switched things up. So Aaron and I are in the same screen, so you can see us bantering, yeah. looking at each other, sure. squinting. It's kind of awkward, though, because <laughs> there's a camera just in my peripheral, and I'm like... Not very good on camera, so that's mm. why I sound sweatier than usual, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> Sounding sweaty. You can also buy our zines. <laughs> we make zines, handmade zines, precious, precious zines, kind of material versions of the the fleeting, ephemeral audio solo scene podcast. Mm, so exactly. Buy those through the link. Yes. Buy them all. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off with radio. What an outdated technology. Why isn't everybody just talking about podcasts? Podcasts are the best things ever. Well, I have a list of pros and cons of radio. Hit me. That I thought we could just <laughs> kind of go through like a lightning round. Sweet. So facelessness. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a pro or a con? I think it is a con. I had it as both. Yeah. Why do you think it's a con? It's a con because that's one of my biggest gripes with the internet is the facelessness. That it's like someone could... It could sound like one thing, but then when you meet them in real life, it's like, whoa, you're a really grumpy person. Yeah. But you can really put on a show because you don't even it's need true. to hide your facial expressions. The body language. You know, they talk about like 80% of human interaction is, is body language or exactly. human communication. And yeah, I agree with that. It's kind of like Twitter accounts where someone mm -hmm. has a cool profile picture, even though it's like a cartoon and an interesting name. And maybe they say things you're like, that's interesting. Mm hmm. But then it's kind of like if you meet that person, it informs, and I'm not talking, not talking about it in like a negative judgmental way, mm -hmm. but it informs 
it gives context. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, and especially when it comes to just audio or just typing on the internet, you can basically impersonate someone. Oh, so you true, can yeah. pretend to be a part of a certain community and like speak on behalf of them, but really you're like the opposition and you're just trying to plant evil seeds. Yeah. There's also obviously the idea of, of AI mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Do you think people just by listening, forget about watching our YouTube videos, do you think they have a like an accurate image of us? Absolutely not. No, because whenever we post clips on Instagram, people always will say, I did not expect that voice to come out of that body. What, for Basically, you? for you. Why? I don't know. What is, I is think people don't expect you to be English. I think I have quite an English look to me. Well, I don't know then. Maybe they think but. you're going to be more English, but more Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> That's for off camera a little bit more, off microphone. <laughs> so facelessness is partially a con. I had it also as a pro because... It's like it's, it's without the glitz and, and glamour of television. Mm-hmm. You know, people say someone might have a face for radio, yeah. like me, but it lets their words shine. It lets them, people focus on their words. Mm-hmm. Similar, you know, it's the same as podcasts. Um, so it's like you don't need all the, the smoke and mirrors. It's, yeah. it's the you don't strength need a cool of your set. Words. You can just have a, a touch little <laughs> embroidery. Yeah, you don't need a cool set. You don't need any luxury clothes. No. You just need to be a voice. Mm, a voice so for you, the people. So you're judged just for your voice. So that, in, in a, in one, on the one hand, is really cool also. Mm-hmm. Another pro I had was the timed nature of it. Mm-hmm. And the therefore, I think, more of a communal nature to it. And this is funny. I think this whole episode, we're going to be kind of just going back, let's say, 10 or 15 years, because the entire shift towards podcasts, I think, and other forms of media has largely been driven by the fact that I don't want to be on someone else's schedule. Mm-hmm. I can watch Netflix. I can watch this TV show anytime I want. Don't even have to DVR it. I can literally just wait a week, wait a month, watch it all at once if I want to. And this is fun for convenience. And it's fun for kind of indulging, like if you want to binge or, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. But I think in terms of building community, it's maybe not the best. So for the individual, it's more appealing. For the community, I think it is more disruptive so radio being all at once there's no archive let's say it doesn't even repeat Mm. it's just you have to catch a show from five to seven otherwise you all miss it i think that's kind of that's kind of a good thing yeah i think so yeah especially like it not being recorded the way that everything is today it's like oh i missed the tv show even if it was airing live on a certain channel you could always find it somehow someone pirated it but no one's out here pirating the radio (laughs) for the most part (laughs) And I remember there used to be a, I'm sure it was on most radio channels, it's like, you have to call in at 301, and it's like, whoever calls in the closest to 301 or something would win a prize. And it's like, you can't do that on any other form of media, because it's always going to be delayed the way the radio isn't. Yeah. I think it was really cool. And... Well, actually, I'll call you out, because do you remember watching TV infomercials? Oh, yes. Where it would say, call now to do this. And mm-hmm. I would always ask my parents, but how do they know yeah. call now? And I, don't, I feel like it's just a scam and they mm-hmm. accept calls at any time. Yeah, I think so. Okay, never mind. Yeah, um, but it ha- it's like preying on the radio mentality that some of us still have in our brains. Yeah. Because radio didn't go to fashion that long ago. I specifically remember our local station, which I'll talk about a bit later, the fall of our local station, basically, mm. from like the pinnacle of our tiny town to like it being bought out and bought out and bought out until it was just like airing the same thing that's being aired all across North America. The gentrification of the radio. Basically. What about the idea of Solar Scene being a radio show instead of a podcast? I've thought about it a bit because yeah. often when you look into grants or different like networks of podcasters, they're often supported by radio stations or it's like you can become a podcaster for cnn or cbc or whatever and it's like that's not really for me soul yeah. scene is like the independent news network and we will try to uphold it independent best we can news network media network i don't sure. know what you would call okay. it it's not even a network it's a yeah it's just a, it's a single just stream two of us <laughs> the network of us but i think it'll always be as independent as humanly possible but we could maybe start a soul scene radio channel once we maybe have a few different shows yeah i think radio is cool but nobody how you say listens to it Mm -hmm. so i think with us struggling to grow a regular podcast yeah i think shooting ourselves in in the foot would be like (laughs) 
No, we're going to move to radio, actually. Yeah. That's where all the opportunity is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it sounds quite characteristic now that I think of it. It does. Yeah, the... You're trying to do, like, the music all by yourself? <laughs> You're, <laughs> yeah. like, plucking away on, like, a mandolin or, or something? D- well, you think I'm making the music? Yeah, because okay. it's just the two of us, sure. so we have to do everything. Another con for radio, I find, is ads. Yeah. Ads were brutal. And this isn't inherent to the medium, but almost all the radio shows and stations I used to listen to were just a ton of rad, of mm. ads, a lot like cable television. And I know this is kind of funny because a lot of podcasts also have a lot of ads, mm-hmm. but the ratio is usually not like it is on on radio, which is crazy. You can also usually skip. It's either at the very beginning, That's middle, true. or end, podcast, and you can just you can skip, oop, yeah. skip past it if you would like. So there's kind of a corporate side to radio that I think yeah. is, is kind of ugly often. And it's been coupled with radio since the dawn of it. Like for the very first few channels were owned by companies and they were kind of just trying to promote their own stuff, maybe through entertainment. So it's it would really have to be decoupled in the solo scene, I think. More independent, as you said. Yeah. Another con I had is that radio is affected by bad weather. And I had a question mark by this because I was like, is it really a con or is it kind of cool? It is kind of cool, isn't it? It is. You're oh, like, man, oh, I was going to listen to show. No, it's raining. Never mind. It's raining. That's kind of cool. This is a, <laughs> the way that inconvenience isn't always an awful thing because it, it kind of colors your life. It mm-hmm. makes every day not the same. Like um, with podcasts, let's say you listen to, let's say there's a podcast that comes out every day and it's 15 minutes long. And you always listen to it on your commute. Yeah. But if it were a radio, then if Monday was raining, it kind of colors the day because it's like, can't listen to that pod Mm -hmm. because it's the antenna. (laughs) Oh, no, my antenna got bent. It's like, that's just so kind of charmingly tactile. One Mm -hmm. third of the the utopian solar scene. I don't know. I think that's that's neat. That's cool. I like radios themselves as well, like the little machines. Because I always used to, I remember when I first got an iPod or something, I was like, can I get radio? Like that was for some reason, like the first question (laughs) I had because I wanted radio and it was like, no, it can't. Like it doesn't have that technology in it, which I was like, that doesn't make sense. It can pick up everything. Like why wouldn't it be able to pick up radio? So I like how unique those little tools are. Yeah. I was trying how singular they are. Yeah. It's not a multi-purpose tool. Mm -hmm. It pretty much gets radio. Maybe it does CDs. Maybe it tells the time. (laughs) Yeah. I was doing a little bit of reading about why iPhones or a lot of smartphones can't do FM radio. Mm -hmm. And the technology goes a little bit above my head. But let me just say, I think they should. Yeah. I mean, probably there's no market for it. That's why that's the main Mm -hmm. reason the the companies don't want to. But yeah, I think there should. Another con I had is the general, not sure if this is widespread or just me, but there's an association of radio with cars, Mm -hmm. or as we call them on this podcast, stink chariots. Yes. Which obviously won't dominate the solar scene as they do today. Mm. I mean, this is, again, it's not inherent to the radio uh, medium, but I feel like the way that I have listened to most of radio in my life has been in a car. Yeah. And there's kind of a drawing, droning, puts you in a trance, like mm. grossness to that. Yeah. Or it's just playing in all the stores and it's yeah, like, please make it stop, similar. make yeah. it stop. But I was thinking a bit about when we listen to radio in this whole scene, which we're going to talk about a bit later. But I was like, I think it still will be largely connected to commute time. Because I don't know about you, but like whenever I walk somewhere, that's when I listen to podcasts. I don't tend to, when I'm home, mm. for the most part, listen to it because that's time that I can either just enjoy the silence or do other things. But yes. when you're walking places or biking places, it's like, yeah, you could use it kind of as a meditative silence. But I find that's, a, that's one time for me that it works really well. So I think it will still be connected to commute in the solo scene, which is interesting. Sure. But maybe transit. Yeah. Maybe that would annoy people. I'm not sure. But. Yeah, I think you still need a choice. Like we were talking a bit about how it's a great community tool, but it's like when there's literally one channel yeah. in every store you go into, on every bus, when you right. go home, it's like you still need a little bit of choice, but I think it could be more localized than it is now. Okay, so the last two cons kind of rapid fire. One is the gentrification we already talked about. Mm-hmm. It happened with my primary station that I listened to in... Um, in Nova Scotia, which is where we used mm-hmm. to live, it got bought out by Stingray Virgin Radio. Oh, yours was Virgin. Yeah, so it's like 101.3 Virgin Radio. Yeah. It used to be The Bounce, which I think was also big, but it was still it was it was at least provincial or local. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, this kind of sucks. Oh, my why, goodness. Why am I listening to Ryan Seacrest? That's such that a blast from the past. What? The Bounce, because yeah, here's kn- the thing. I know the jingle. But listen, you don't know this because you lived in one part of Nova Scotia and I lived in the other. Because I lived in like further further away from the big city than you did yes you would have to 
when you were driving towards the city, there would be a point. It was called Mount Tom. Yeah. Where you'd start being able to get the bounce, oh, which know, played all the pop music. I know how radio works. No, but like, it was such an exciting time. It was like, as soon as you'd cross this one point, it's like, 101.3, tune in, tune in, tune in. Yeah. Everyone was like so excited because then that was just the local one, which would be playing like sea shanties. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get to listen to Taylor Swift and it's like the most exciting part of your day. Well, yeah. <laughs> so long as you're not listening to the High School Musical CD as your car, I'm guessing, was, was kind of dominated by. Yeah. But we had 101.3, The Bounce. We had 100.7, The Country Station, which was very big in my high school. Mm. And we had one called CKBW, which I just think is so beautifully <laughs> radio. Like, yeah. I love that name. I think if there were a solo scene radio, we'd have to change the name. Yeah. To like SCNA or something. Mm-hmm. Or SCNE for solo scene. Um, and we also had one that I discovered um, when I was, like, basically an adult, which was called 92.9, which just did weird, like, smooth jazz and classical. <laughs> and I didn't really understand it, but... Um, yeah, that started kind of scoring my commutes. Mm. I felt like a grown up. I was like decompressing after work, listening to <laughs> some smooth like 15 jazz. Of, of jazz. Yeah. There's just like smoke kind of, you don't know where it's coming from when you're listening to smooth okay. jazz. Yeah. Just a purple haze. Mm-hmm. But the last con is repetition because yeah. this is something that, that I think everybody who has listened to radio for more than an hour, especially popular stations is like, this is awful. Yeah. <laughs> Probably because it's made just to be dipped in for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Mm-hmm. But if you were subject, as I used to be, and I'm sure a lot of retail workers also have been for, let's say, a day of work, a shift, anything over three hours or so, you just start to hate every song on the radio <laughs> because they play them so much. Yeah. And this goes in with the corporateness of it. Yeah, I feel like radio stations are like afraid of silence, which obviously in their, like that's what they are is noise. But it's like maybe it just streams for two hours a day and like then it's just silent for the rest of it. Whereas how it is now, it's like 24-7, so they have to repeat, even if it's like full-on repeating like a four-hour chunk of programming. Yeah. It has to. I remember, I mean, it still exists, I imagine. There's satellite radio, which is basically basically radio, but it's a different technology, and they're really specific channels. So one of them was just this one minister. It's like it was a Christian radio station. And he had recorded probably 98 sermons in his life. (laughs) And it just cycled through all 98. And my dad would say, I mean, he would still probably say this. He could quote all of them because he just would listen to it on repeat. (laughs) And he's like, that's a lot of things to have memorized but because it's so repetitive. It just gets drilled into your brain. If someone did that with our podcast, like put it on a station, put it on loop. Exactly. Would you feel kind of creeped out or kind of proud if someone had memorized it? bit creeped out i feel like my words aren't worth memorizing no so <laughs> I, someone starts um adopting all our awkward verbal tics mm. that would be the worst thing he started recognizing that in the, out in the <laughs> wild and for a couple more pros i thought a big one is that it's accessible it's easy to find i think something that we both don't like about podcasts is that i'm sure there's a lot of very very good podcasts out there they are impossible to search and to find. They are. Like they're impossible. I think there should even be something like a randomizer, like on a radio dial. If you had a physical radio, literally the way that you find them is just by twisting a dial. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's what I mean by accessible. It's easy to find things. And then you can kind of think, oh, 100.1, don't like that one. Mm-hmm. 101.3, that one's cool. Whereas with podcasts, it's really, it's so much of a shot in the dark where you're just typing words and hoping that one of them is a keyword. Yeah. I really don't like searching for podcasts. No. That's probably a whole other episode of like my gripes about it. Well, I was thinking this was this is partially also an episode about podcasts. Mm-hmm. It is. One thing, yeah, it's like you type in something so simple. Like I was trying to find a podcast about the Louvre. And so I was like, Louvre Museum. And it just comes up like everything but a, mu- a podcast about. It's like art history, the life of Pablo Picasso. And it's yeah. just like, I just want to listen to something about the physical yeah. institution. And people listening might be saying, you have to Google it. You have to ask a search engine. Search engines are terrible. Yeah. Google is awful. I mean, obviously, we'll get to this in the upcoming semester. Wink, wink. But I heard a bit about the new, because I didn't realize what that that AI thing is that you can type stuff into and it will like generate. I thought it was just generating essays like the chat one but apparently it's like taking over search engines and i'm like this is just too much but i'm like it does like search engines need to be adopted but this is not the way but we'll yeah we'll get into that in the internet well that's a good thing about radio because we haven't actually talked much about the music of it mm-hmm. 
is the curated aspect. Yeah. Radios are to, let's say, an, an Apple Music or Spotify playlist, a generated playlist that is, mm -hmm. I think kind of like what Mubi is to Netflix. Yeah. And if we were sponsored by Mubi right now, that would be a very, very good transition. It's a dream, yeah. But we're not. But it is a hand-curated movie streaming service. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like you're trying to deceive someone into thinking you're not sponsored. No, we're not. I wish, I wish we were, because I like movie. Yeah. But... Yeah, so basically there's a human touch to it. Yeah. To the best ones, not to the biggest ones, not to Virgin. Because mm -hmm. that's just kind of like, it feels like it's AI generated, even if it maybe isn't. Yeah. But I think like a smaller radio station, it's like someone's making you a mixtape. Mm -hmm. And it's probably someone who knows a lot more about music than you. Or well, that's how it is for me anyway. So Yeah, for sure. So that's cool. Radios themselves. I assumed they were one of the older communication technologies based on like what I understood. I was like telegraph, then it probably was like radio was right alongside that and then telephone came later. But it was actually because it's wireless, it was after telephone that it was invented and like widely used. Yeah. Because yeah, telephones are over wires, same as telegraph, which well, is... when you think about it, it's like a magic technology. It is. It's like you don't need anything except a little pokey stick. Mm -hmm. So they were basically discovered when radio waves were discovered and that you could manipulate them and like send them out and the idea was developed originally in 1890s and then like solidified in 1894 by someone called Marconi last name Marconi okay and he wanted to just send out wireless telegraph like morse code signals and it was widely applied to military especially people in the navy because you can't exactly have a telephone wire just trailing behind your boat like you needed to be wireless and that was how it was widely applied and the patent was held by the u.s navy until 1919 but then marconi who was not american as the name implies he came to america and kind of partnered with general electric to make it a product yeah up until the 1920s it was still just like the military was using it but then a bunch of cool cats were just trying to make their own receivers to like tap in yeah so i feel like that's where that um stereotype comes from in movies like the little kid in his bedroom like tuning into the <laughs> police network but that was like the big thing it was like fourteen thousand different amateur radioists had built their own radios and were like tuning in and trying to send out music and trying mm -hmm. to send out different things and that's kind of how it developed it was a very grassroots technology it wasn't just like oh we've discovered it and we're going to use it for music use it for news just was kind of like it slowly evolved from just Morse code into being able to send out more complex sounds over longer ranges. That's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So I just assumed it was very commercial from the way you kind of see it portrayed in movies and stuff. It's like, and then all of a sudden, 60% of Americans had radios in their houses. But it's like, no, it was like really slow. Well, not relatively slow, but like it was grassroots and then yeah once people kind of caught on to it and didn't have to make their own anymore which was a turning point and could just buy them it became a big thing because it's like before that the only entertainment would be going to going somewhere yeah but now entertainment could just come to you mm -hmm. so radio as we know it as mainly music and news it was very different it was more these really complex like soap operas and yeah radio um narratives right yeah radio shows kind of like the true crime podcasts mm -hmm. sure do you think that marconi has any relation to the one after which the montreal street is named marconi. i thought that might have been why you kept mentioning it no i just think it's a cool name oh, okay because remember we, there is a marconi avenue or avenue de marconi or yeah something. maybe the guy who like officially figured out how to sustain the energy currents to like push out a constant stream of radio waves basically he was yes. canadian and he okay. wasn't Alexander Graham Bell. Okay. <laughs> Do you know the difference between AM and FM? Yes. No, don't say it. Don't say it. I feel like that's not what our podcast is for. <laughs> no offense. You, no, you can say it. You can say it if you want. No, it's amplitude modulated or frequency <laughs> modulated. <laughs> um, I could tell you were just itching to come out with that one. No, I wasn't even going to say it. I had just like decided not to because obviously, yeah. It's I knew you really... would have written it down. I had to because then you were going to ask me. <laughs> that's your... Because I like asking you these miscellaneous You're questions right. about technology that is just <laughs> mostly irrelevant to the discussion. But okay, speaking of irrelevant to the discussion, mm. or mostly, 
the organism of the week for this week. I've already shown you. You thought mm. it was a wonderful drawing. Show it to the camera now. Show it to you now. Mm. It looks like a bowl of pea soup. It's an organism. What do you think it is? <laughs> it looks like a rock with some kind of moss or lichen on it. Moss. Moss. So this is kind of my constellation because on last week's episode, I said, let's talk about rocks next week. Mm. And we did mull that over. We got very dramatic thinking about it during the week. Like, how can we talk about rocks? How can we make this interesting? Yeah. How can we describe the state of rockhood in the solar scene? Mm. And our conclusion was just, let's not. Because we've just yeah. come off of however many months of talking about nature. And we thought we're going to shake it up a little bit. But I wanted to still represent a slice of rockhood on this episode. Mm. Of course, rocks aren't organisms. So I thought, what grows on rocks? Moss. Mm. Your thoughts on moss, Alicia? Moss is great. If you're stranded in the wilderness, you can squeeze it. Give you filtered water. Really? Yeah. I thought you were going to say, like what SpongeBob said, that it always grows facing civilization. It does. It always, well, it always grows facing north. That's different. But civilization's <laughs> usually north for some reason. <laughs> you just made that up. I'm pretty sure it's true. It might be west, might be south. So specifically, if you couldn't tell by the detail of this drawing, I chose mm. the pincushion moss, which I think is what used to grow in my like family um, property in the yard. Mm. And there was this one particular spongy spot. I don't know if you ever saw it, but I would always obviously be walking around barefoot, mm -hmm. as I want to do, and would always make a point of standing there for a few minutes, especially on a warm day when it's kind of hot. Yeah. It's heavenly. I used to be very creeped out by moss. Understandably. I think to an extent I still have that reticence, but I gradually overcame it, and now I, I like the spongy, soft, welcome, welcoming of it. It's like mm -hmm. nature's mattress. It is. I think moss is great. It's good for cooling. You can put it on your roofs. Yeah, green roofs, mm -hmm. living walls. Yeah. There's a lot of moss involved in that. Uh, it's used in bonsai. Yeah. I feel like there is a bit of a cultural divide where in some countries it is more maybe accepted and in others, mainly where I've been around, it's kind of deemed something of a weed towards like pristine gardens where people yeah. just want grass. But for instance, in Japan and bonsai, it's encouraged to kind of cover the soil. Mm -hmm. And I think what I wrote down was that it gives the better illusion of age. Yeah. Because it just makes things seem ancient. Yeah, there's a lot of moss in like graveyards and stuff. That's true. Maybe because it's kind of associated with swamps and Shrek, we don't like it as much here. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, there's over 12,000 species of mosses. They spread via spores, not seeds. Mm. Very strange. They don't have proper roots. I was doing a lot of reading about what exactly they are. Mm -hmm. It's rather technical. So They're like a, they're not plant or fungi? No, they're, they're plant. Of, okay. But as you can imagine, strange ones. Yeah. Or I think strange ones. Um, some random facts. In Mexico, they're sometimes used as Christmas decoration. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Actually, that was the only random fact I had. Yeah. Okay, folks. The pincushion moss. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. We should do a thing now that we have this new YouTube thing where after the organism... I was kind of thinking that. It there. A little collage. That's neat. Yeah. Like he joins <laughs> the pantheon. Yeah. Or she. It's like moss. Spore. Yeah, it's a spore. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, returning to radios, I had a quote that I wanted to share. I found on the internet, obviously. Mm. It says, Somebody just gave me a shower radio. Thanks a lot. Do you really want music in the shower? I guess there's no better place to dance than a slick surface next to a glass door. <laughs> that is kind you of funny. You know who said that? No. Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, Wise words from the patron comedian of the solo scene. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, though. It's true. You listen to music when you're in the shower. Sometimes, because I take cold showers and I just need that little, extra, <laughs> that little extra steel to get me through it. Yeah, yeah, I see. But that is kind of funny. I wanted to talk a little bit about the state of radio today, mm. i.e. perhaps what has overtaken it it's obvious to say podcasts but it's also it's like what exactly from radio has become podcasts mm -hmm. and what let's say has become spotify or apple music playlists mm -hmm. or what i was kind of most interested in what has become like live streams on the internet let's say twitch streams or youtube streams whatever it may be and i think it's really interesting especially with streams that there is such a generational divide where let's say people Largely, like people older than us or in a generation above us, I think generally don't see the point in it. They're like, this is silly. Why would you, let's say, watch someone watching a movie or watch mm -hmm. someone playing a video game? And people below us, younger than us, that is, 
uh, generally kind of like, yeah, you know, watching a streamer doing this. Yeah. And I think it's generally a symptom of I don't have any friends in real life. You know, it's like I don't have anyone to play this video game with and just make little mm. comments with. Because typically the thing with streamers is that they're not anything special. They yeah. might just be kind of charismatic or kind of funny, but it's nothing like amazing. Mm -hmm. It's just that they are company to a lot of people who don't have company. Mm -hmm. And I think radio was that also, at least in part, for a while. Yeah, and it still is so. probably to some people. Yeah, you're cooking dinner and you put on the radio and you're listening to someone yeah. kind of comment on the music. Exactly. And someone, And then, yeah, you're just listening to the music. It's almost like a book club or a right. something or, or along. For instance, my mum used to listen to on How Commute, I think it was called like Frankie and... Frankie and Anna is like this morning segment on a radio mm -hmm. and they would always just like talk about frivolous like internet news or like mm -hmm. make jokes and do like little Ellen style game shows but on the radio mm -hmm. and the tagline for that was kind of like starting your morning the the right way or like mm -hmm. the best way to start the work day mm -hmm. and it's like maybe in the past that was a bit more with people or maybe in the solo scene should I say that should be something that you do with people mm -hmm. in real life rather than it being more of a parasocial passive thing. Yeah. I guess those thoughts are a little bit disparate. But. No, it makes sense. I mean, how it relates to the soul scene is we often talk about it, it'd be much more common to either take a bus or just like walk or bike. And obviously, if everyone every day is going to the same places, for the most part, like that'll yeah. still be the same in the soul scene. Like people yeah. will have a routine. You'll run into the same people and be like, hey, did you end up going to that event you were talking about yesterday and they'd be like yeah and like you kind of have news and things to talk about that way and I don't think it's the time for like deep philosophical conversations mm. like that's why the morning radio channels aren't like the 10 greatest philosophers of all time it's usually pretty lighthearted. yeah and I don't think it has to be completely lighthearted, but it can be just like way to wake up your social brain right so it's not dormant when you get to work or dormant when oh, you yeah. get to your project. Another kind of contrast I thought of was that podcasts and streamers, I think the emphasis tends to be a little bit more towards the actual subject of the podcast, like mm -hmm. people listening to this. It's kind of the form makes it about you and I mm -hmm. or people watching a streamer. It's kind of like the, the form makes it about them. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is a little bit of an ambiguous observation, but I think with radio the emphasis is somehow a little bit more on the listeners. Yeah, I think so. I think because the image that I get when I think about like the heyday of radio is people sitting around a radio in mm -hmm. a room and maybe talking about it. Yeah. Or something else I, I found is that NPR, National Public Radio in the USA, they do listening parties. Really? Not like common ones, not big ones, but they started doing that a few years ago. Yeah. yeah listen. And I think oh. that's a super cool thing. Like albums do that, right? Yeah. So it's like we're going to get a bunch of people in a room, have a listening party. That's cool. I think that's neat. I like listening parties. I always kind of thought it'd be fun to do that for solo scene someday. Yeah, of course. I'd want to do that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking a bit about like cool applications of radio throughout history. And then we'll get to in the solo scene how these will translate or mutate. I don't know. But the one that stood out to me that I knew of from when we did our education series was that during the wars, radio was used to educate kids from home. So it was like remote learning. And Ohio and a few different states had actual, like, official curriculums, K to 12, yeah. that they would publish through the radio. So it would be, like, lectures, basically, and interactive activities. But you could also get, like, workbooks and work through them. Mm -hmm. You could submit things via mail to teachers. Yeah. And, like, that seems really neat. Well, there's an interesting parallel with the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. The, the at-home learning that a bunch of kids just struggled through or families just struggled yeah. through for a couple of years. Yeah. And I don't think... I mean, I, I don't think at-home learning as the sole source of education is good No. in like 99% yeah. of the cases, but it'd be cool. It's kind of like what we do with the zine, like trying to keep it physical, not just yeah. in the waves. But the way I think that it's illustrative compared to the pandemic and at-home learning, not just from an educational point of view, but it's this um, comparison of when you are listening to something transient you can't pause it you mm -hmm. can't rewind it won't play again on the radio yeah um or indeed in an actual lecture hall when the person's just talking to you compared to let's say for us in university when certain professors would record it post it online mm -hmm. and sometimes you just say well i don't need to go to class today yeah but or you would even be there and be like i don't need to listen Yeah, exactly that would be a big difference in the way that you engage with that 
you mm-hmm. obviously pay so much more attention when there's a, a beautiful transience to it. And I think that things that are archived, like podcasts, I mm-hmm. think those still have a place in the Zoocene. But I just think that we should maybe be a bit more aware of this and and still find room for those things, for the live performances, basically. Because radio mm-hmm. is a live thing. That's kind of the, the coolness of it. Yeah. I also, you you touched on it, but just to put it into explicit terms, you have to focus and you have to use your imagination when you're listening. Even when you're reading a book, you don't have to focus that much because you can always go back. And when you're watching something on YouTube or watching something like MP4, so video and audio and sometimes even subtitles, so you have that like third layer of like things you can kind of take in, yeah. you can be so passive and still get the gist of it. Mm-hmm. Like we're rewatching Doctor Who, which when I've watched it partially through the first time was during my grade 12 exams and like really busy times in life. So it was like grade 11 and 12, I think. And I'd watch them while I was studying, while I was doing other things. And then we're, so we're rewatching them now, just like sitting down and watching the episode, nothing else going on. And I'm like, I remember all this at (laughs) once, but I also remember nothing because I, I consumed it and like it's stuck in my brain but I couldn't tell you a character name or like yes. the events. Um, so it's this weird thing that we're like constantly inundated with things and they're taking up space in our brains, but it's mm. like, we're not actually. So radio maybe hones the attention span in a, in a positive way. Yeah, I think so. Sense. Can we hear about, the, you promised you would talk about your radio station that was bought out and bought out and bought out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll use it to give a few more examples of solo scene applications, but our radio is 94.1 CKEC. <laughs> Why and is one, it always, what's the K? <laughs> Why is that always there? I don't know what the K stands for. It's always. Yeah. But it was our local radio station. It was about six towns would receive it. And it was hosted by Anne and Jean. And then eventually Jean left and it was just Anne. Oh, no. Um, and Anne stuck it out through several book bios and everything. But then she's now not on the radio station anymore. I remember once getting a signed picture of Anne and Jean that came to our school. And you'd think that it was like Justin Bieber because everyone knew them. And they were like celebrities. Was it weird to see them? Yeah, super weird. (laughs) Because they do not look like what you think. Jean was like seven feet tall. Sure. And it's like, why are you on, like, I don't know. It just, they didn't look like radio people. But anyway, so that was the radio station. There was a morning show that we'd listen to every single day going to school. Like everyone would listen to it. On the school bus? I didn't get the school bus Uh. because we lived far out. But in my car, we'd listen to it. And then the kids on the school bus would also listen to it. And there were a few things. One was they would announce birthdays. So you could like submit your birthday. And it would be so exciting if it was your birthday because you'd get to school and everyone would know it's your birthday. So in other words, community. Yeah. Right. So wonderful. There were also morning trivia every single morning. And this was like a cool way to promote local businesses. So advertisements. Yeah. But also promote community. So it would be like... They'd ask the question, you'd call in during the song that plays after the question, and whoever gets through first and answers first wins. And I remember, like, my mom won a few times, I won once, like, because you're just listening and you're like, oh my goodness, I know it. And it's just so exciting. And then you're calling and you're like waiting and you like have the phone number memorized. (laughs) Um, I remember one morning being like super set on staying. Like, I was like, we need to stay just a few minutes longer before we leave for school because I really want to yes. play this game. And it was just so cool. And then you win, like, a $10 gift card to, like, a local restaurant. Yeah. And it's just, like, so neat. You and know, I some, love that. Something else radio-related from our youth, or at least from mine, snow days. They snow would announce day snow days, yeah. We would always just go downstairs. And for some reason, that aforementioned CKBW would get the news before the television did. Mm-hmm. So we ended up just putting on the radio at like 6 a.m. always. Mm-hmm. And I would just be underneath it with both my fingers crossed, mm-hmm. praying. And then they got to the part where they were listing the school boards and they get to mine. I'd be like, yes. Yeah. And there's something very different about that. I'm sure that kids today, there is the analogy that maybe they're on their school board's Twitter and they're just refreshing mm-hmm. or re- trying to reload the page. Yeah. And, you know, they'd see it and they'd celebrate in the same way. Mm-hmm. But there's a voice telling you. Yeah, it's that, so epic. Yeah. There were a couple There's mornings. A real time. Yeah. Blink and you miss it. Because sometimes, mm-hmm. like... You'd well, head to I, school. Yeah. Or you'd be, like, stuck at the bus stop. And yeah. be like... I must have missed it. Mm-hmm. But this, these, these things, they sound less convenient, but they color life. That's what makes the fabric of things. Yeah. It was... I just really liked the radio. And I remember once going to the radio station. 
And you went there? Yeah. And because it was a really old station, they had just like the room where they would DJ from basically, it was all digital at this point, but it was just full of records. Mm. Because that's how they used to do it. They would just like pluck a record, play it, like layering them up. And it was just such a cool spot. Like you felt like you were in like an old studio that you see betrayed and like Sunshine Records or something. Yeah. And it was just really neat. And I think the game show aspect is weirdly appealing to me. I don't like TV <laughs> game like shows very so much. much. I think there's kind of a there's a lottery <laughs> capitalist like Colin, you might earn some money and, you know, kind of like yeah. jump through these hoops and we'll give you a hundred mm-hmm. bucks or something. There's something about that. I don't No, I know. Like, but I would do like the interactivity of it. Yeah. Oh, that was the thing. For your birthday, when you spent your birthday, they'd do a draw to win a cake. What? I never won. I am like the least lucky person in the world. Well, you only have one birthday a year, so. Yeah. My sister would win like every year. Every year, really? Like a lot of years. Okay. It was like several in a row. But I have a very common birthday and she doesn't, so. You have a common birthday? Yeah. That's strange. I know like six people with my birthday. Um, Something else regular <laughs> related during Christmas time, Santa. Santa. Did you have that? Yeah. He'd what? be like, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, and kids would call be in. Be good kids. <laughs> But kids would call in and tell them what they wanted. Yeah. It was always kind of nosy. I felt like it was so mm-hmm. intrusive because we'd be listening like, oh, let's see what this kid wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was something about that. Yeah, there's definitely a capitalist slant to radio yeah, that probably is. won't translate to the solo scene. Well, let's talk about the solo scene radio. Yeah. I just listed a few tenets. First of which is kind of a preface that I think should kind of infiltrate the whole energy of it is that we should be trying to capture the vibe of liveness. Mm-hmm. And you only really see that. I only really see this on the internet on live streams mm-hmm. where you have a chat on the, the right side of the screen. Yeah. And I don't like really streaming. I don't think it's great for society nor the individual. But I think that is such a little vestige of community that remains. Yeah. It's usually quite profane. You know, it's usually quite vulgar. But there's something nice, and I'm sure people, other people feel it. And that's the whole draw of mm-hmm. you are reacting to this in real time with other people. You're one for mm. a while you're all using the same emoji like you're all saying the same thing there's something obviously that people like about that so capturing that energy of the live chat or even mm. the radio youtube channels because some of them are just music you know like yeah there's a there's a permanent 24-hour um anime girl homework lo-fi channel right lo-fi beats to chill slash study yeah. too yeah <laughs> but it, it always only has like three thousand or six thousand people mm-hmm. watching but you can see the number which is cool yeah and then you can tune in or we were watching <laughs> Like a live stream of like the Serengeti National Park or something. Mm -hmm. And there were like three of us watching. Yeah, three of us. But we were united in that one moment Mm. for looking at this very, very dark, grainy image of a lake (laughs) and wondering whether that was a trunk of wood or an alligator. Yeah. Still undetermined. Of course. It was pitch black there. (laughs) But I think that's great. On the lines of like the contest, I was also thinking... Like I, I'm gonna stick with that. Some kind of like call in submission thing. I think is cool. Oh, submissions for sure. Yeah. I mean, you see it also like in Instagram pages, um, for for our universities, it would be like Dalhousie confessions or like mm-hmm. Dal memes, right? Yeah. Like people like that community because the Instagram and the the social media otherwise is so global. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking also bake alongs, cook alongs, like book clubs. So like this is sort of taking the place of the internet in a way of like you're not joining together for a physical book club but it's like if there is i i'm saying all this under the pretext that the the channels are local they don't have to be hyper local like just a two kilometer radius but like Mm. say there's a famous book club on your radio so therefore you know people in your community are reading the book yeah maybe you don't have to gather together to discuss it but I'm sure these things would pop up or be something to talk about. Well, you'd see someone reading it in public. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Like, oh, are you reading that for the book club? Yeah. And then you can talk. And same with the baking cook-alongs. It's like, right now you just Google a recipe. But ma- imagine once a week, this local chef, they do a segment and they teach you how to cook something. So you just pop on the radio and it's like kind of funny, but also kind of like you're yeah. learning something and you're just baking along. So it's like, this is very much taking the place of the internet. It's not entirely promoting community, but it is it's promoting community for the introverts, I feel like. But yeah, I think that's that's possibly why we feel so drawn to it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think the extroverts, um, which is a shrinking number, let's just say, because I think the internet produces introverts and the way we raise kids does today. Mm-hmm. Um, there probably hasn't been so impactful a decimation of the community. Still mm-hmm. quite a decimation, but it hasn't crushed it completely. But I think for the introverts who are, you know, you feel such a, 
such a pull towards all these other things that have emerged that can take the place of human interaction or any of the awkwardness. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why would I need to make friends? I have Aaron and Alicia on Soa Scene, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. You know, like, I think that's a, it's a dangerous kind of magnetism that we feel towards things like that. Mm. Yeah. Things like your spriggy hair it really attracts us when we can't. Sure. It's like a magnetic field. I had a, <laughs> had a few points with a vision for the solo scene. I was kind of just describing like a radio station that would be cool to have. Yeah, I like that. Specifically, I was thinking vaguely along the lines of if a campus had one. Yeah, I like that. Our school used to have a radio station. I remember reading about it when we started mm -hmm. the podcast. I think it ended around like 2012, 2013. Yeah. So in other words, around the time Spotify started to blow up. Mm -hmm which makes sense. But I was thinking very decentralized, obviously, and community-based. Something that I was reading about the radio, and especially in America, I'm not sure if this is the case in other countries, and I'm also not sure if it's still the case and how kind of pervasive it is, but they have something called the FCC, which can censor what's on public radio, basically. Mm -hmm. So that obviously is not a good thing. Yeah, it kind of arose because people would like cut on top of each other. Yeah, it's a free-for-all, of course. Mm -hmm. But, you know... Yeah, I think it's cool because you can just like make your own transmitter and then just like send it out, which is cool. <laughs> anyway, but, so decentralized, yeah. um, timed, because I don't like the idea of being 24 hours. Yeah. I like the idea of having 16 hours of radio silence and then a shift in the morning of four hours, a shift in the evening mm -hmm. of four hours. What? Like in Harry Potter. Potter watch. Yeah, that's something I was going <laughs> to mention. Yeah, two, two instances of radio from media that I think are quite inspiring is from the last Harry Potter, mostly the book, a little bit in the movie where they were doing, they were basically gorillas on the run, mm -hmm. PUEs, and there was a, a magic radio station where they would tune in to get news about the resistance, essentially. And that's, you know, that's kind of a cool grassroots, like, DIY element of radio where you can run it from your garage mm -hmm. and reach everybody. That's, that's neat. And also from the film American Graffiti, which I, I really love. That one is very kind of idolizing, romanticizing cars, which I don't think is great. Mm -hmm. But there was still just such a sense that you are recapturing that there's a zeitgeist there is a shared zeitgeist which i feel like we've it's so fractured today that it's almost hard to recognize mm -hmm. but in that particular era it's set i think in 1960 i think it's set right at the end of the 50s um that's just like it's such a strong and a and a pure and a cohesive image of a culture and i think radio is is kind of a, a uniquely suited medium for for transmitting that so the timed thing is cool. And also having a visible, visitable studio, like you said. I just think that would be so neat. Yeah. We were recently watching a movie called uh, Night of the Comet, which mm -hmm. is an 80s kind of post-apocalyptic movie. A lot of it was set at the local radio station and everyone mm -hmm. kind of conglomerated there. And I liked the idea of that as a community center. Yeah. I think that's really neat. I think it is too. Like you can just drop in yeah. and, and watch it live if you want. Yeah. That's, that's cool. You picture someone like running in with a piece of like hot news yeah <laughs> gotta get this out yeah um i think i also like the idea that local musical talent yes but also just local talent of all sorts can be kind of highlighted on local radio stations because yeah. yeah. as it is right now it's like it'd be cool if the podcast could reach everyone in montreal but it can't because there's just so many other things kind of in montreal so it's like this isn't really a montreal podcast even though it's recorded here and i feel like 10, 15 years ago, if there was something, an artist or whatever yeah. out of Montreal, I'd be like, oh, that's a Montreal thing. Well, how do you how do you create a Montreal thing now? I don't know. Because the internet has absolutely broken that idea, I think. Mm -hmm. It's why, I mean, I, I think I mentioned this on the podcast before, but there was a very short-lived social media app in my high school called Yik Yak, mm -hmm. which was, I think when I say short-lived, about a morning it lasted before it was banned from the IP or whatever, yeah. because it just, it's a localized thing. You had the option to be anonymous, which mm -hmm. everybody took. Of course. Where it was basically just a Twitter, but for just the school, and everybody just trash-talked each other. Mm -hmm. But capturing that that local energy, making it something positive, mm -hmm. and broadcasting it. Let's say that's what I that's mm -hmm. my vision for the solo scene radio. Um, I think in terms of the music, having it mostly focused on discovery rather, rather than just replaying top 40, mm -hmm. because everybody tends to know those songs. So it's yeah. like, why would I need to hear those? Show me mm -hmm. something new. That's just... I guess that's kind of taste based though. Um and also like if it's if we're talking about music, I think radio being a good place to not just hear music, but hear a little bit about music mm -hmm. and also hear about ways to find music. 
Because yeah. I think this is a common complaint people have with the internet. It's like, well, if I'm not listening to radio, how do I find new music? Mm-hmm. And I think it's because those those the algorithm I think generated playlists that the streaming apps have tend to leave a lot to be desired, as we found out through what five or six years listening to Apple Music. Mm-hmm. Where it's like the playlists are just always bad. Everything on the internet, I feel like, is populated by whoever can pay the most, most of the time. Yeah. Like, even Google now, the top page is just, like, all ads. Yeah. I feel like, because whenever it's, like, oh, top 10 new artists on Apple Podcasts, and it's, like, is really the top yeah. 10 artists? Are being like, artificially inflated yeah. before. <laughs> but I think, you know, independence, it's, just, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. the same as we talk about today on in news or in podcasts, that you want to have s- individual people that you can trust. Mm-hmm. So I think even if it's something as seemingly benign as music, when you say, oh, that's Frankie, he's on the radio, and he's also telling me about, I can follow him. Let's say I can follow him on Apple Music. He makes playlists there also. Like mm-hmm. That's kind of, you know, like, it it gives you, it makes the internet into something of a map where you can yeah. find things a lot easier. The question I had was, how is it listened to in the solo scene? Because I feel like headphones, to an extent, defeats the purpose, question mark. Yeah. Not sure about that. They were they originally had headphones like that was the way that it was originally listened to because okay. big amplifiers were a bit challenging. I feel like headphones are slightly unsolicene. Yeah. Well, what's the what's the headphones even plugging into? Like you plug it into a little. I'm picturing kind of like a a Game Boy sized. Like what Kiki has. Yeah, like just a little personal radio, or like you have a home radio system or something. I think homes is simple. Mm-hmm. Like buildings is simple, but it's the in between. I was a little bit like. Yeah. I think just a personal, just like the size of a phone yeah. kind of radio thing, kind of like an cool. MP3 player. I guess. Um, I think s- I don't love headphones, but I also think they're very important. Otherwise, you're going to get like me. Yesterday, I was in a cafe, just minding my own business, reading, drinking my coffee, and someone just comes in and sits down and starts watching a sitcom out loud. Yeah, shout out to that guy watching Young Sheldon in the cafe. And I was like, show. "Excuse me." <laughs> you didn't say that though. No, I just like you just griped about it when you yeah. got home. Well, it's because he even had the audacity to say to me before he sat down, sorry to disturb your silence. Yeah. And then I was like, what do you mean? What you should have started <laughs> doing is laughing really loudly whenever the laugh track came on, just to try and unnerve him and yeah. out alpha him. So it's like, if you need to do this in public, headphones are good. Okay. But I, anyway. But maybe, listening party is also very cool. I think it's cool. I think yeah. that's neat. It's maybe at the of, place. Yeah. At the, at the studio. There you go. Or at cafes, of course, you know, things like that. Mm. And something else I thought about is that it, it would be cool if it were possible, perhaps using a smartwatch or just on a website, that you could, you could opt out of this, obviously. But there's a way to opt in where you could show that you are a listener. Like when hmm. you're listening, you can become a dot on a map so that other people can see. Yeah, that's and let's say, cool. And it's very detailed because it's local. So it's like a, only a 10 kilometer radius or whatever. Mm-hmm. Someone could find you. I mean, I know you're nodding because it's like, well, that sounds suspicious. No, but, but there's, there's, like, there's like dating apps, I think, that are like that. You can kind of show where you are yeah. on the app. And I'm talking about like, like in a mall. I'm not talking about in your house. Yeah. In a mall or at a school or in a library. Mm-hmm. Something neat like that. Yeah, I think it's not terrible because it's say, optional. Oh, you listen to CKBS as well? Because mm-hmm. there has to be a K in there. Yeah. That's neat. What do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then that's a meet cute for a couple. Yeah. And then they each start listening with one headphone in each ear. Yeah. Maybe that's too intimate for a first encounter, but something like that. That's all I had on radio. That's Alicia on radio, on the podcast. We should do something. Well, I'm kind of spoiling that, but if we said like signing off, mm. I don't whatever they would say at the end of a radio station. Set your dials to solar scene. <laughs> <laughs> we should have something Every like Monday. that. Monday. Set your sundial. Sun solar sun. Mm. Nah, mm. we'll work on that. Okay. Tuning out.